Okay, in this tutorial, I want to talk about React Router. So this is how we can use the URL that's up in the location bar to determine which components we're going to show on the screen. Because you're never going to build every app where every part of it is visible all the time. You want to be able to control which parts are showing up, which components are there, and which ones aren't as the user interacts with it. So I'm going to build a uh, Create React app here. I'm using Create React app. I'm going to call it Rowdy. Just why not? <laughs> it's just going to be about routes. So I'm going to have this folder called Rowdy. This should be done in just a minute. There we are. I'll CD into that folder. Now to make this work, I'm going to have to use either NPM or Yarn to include one package, React Router DOM. We need to have this included in our project so that we can actually add the routes in. I mean, we can manually build the whole thing, but this is just such an easy package to use that why not use it? Okay, so we've added React, React Router DOM into our project. So let's uh, come over here. I'm going to open up that folder. So I'll find the one called Rowdy. There it is. Open up that project. Here we go. So inside of my source folder, my app.js file, I'm going to just strip out all the stuff that was there by default. There we go. And I don't care about getting this CSS or that SVG image. Okay, so I've got a very basic app. And if I just start my server running, so we'll yarn start. Okay, my React package is going to be up and running here in a second. There we are. Yes, I don't have anything inside, so it's going to complain about that. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so basic app.js file, nothing really inside of it. We're going to need to bring in several things we need from the React Router DOM package that we imported. We need browser router, browser router, there it is. We need switch, and we're also going to bring in something called route. So that's three of the four things that we're going to use from this package. Browser router is going to be our parent element here. This is going to contain everything that we're doing on the page. Inside of that, we want to have a switch. And this is going to be the thing. It's like a switch case statement. Basically, it just contains all the other components. And we are going to build a bunch of routes. So we can have a whole bunch of those inside there like this. The switch is going to look at the URL that's in the page. And based on the URL, it's going to determine which route, which starting point, which components are going to be brought in and used. So I don't have any right now. I'm just going to add the very first one. So we're going to have these two com these two attributes like this. Path will be the path that's in the URL, everything that comes after the URL. So let's say we'll start with that. This is our home page. What do we want to have as a home page? Well, we get to pick and choose. We get to say Hey, you know what? I'm going to render the component called home. So we'll build one called home inside of here. I will have to build that page. I will have to import it. So I will create something called home.js and that will be my component. Now, we also want to be careful with this because I could have, oops, I could have several components, so component A, component B, component C, and so on. And, you know, I've got these two different paths. The problem is that all three of them are starting with the same thing. So inside the switch, as soon as the first one is met that matches, this is the one, this component is always going to be rendered. Even if this is what the URL is, either one of these, because it starts with this, that's the component that gets rendered. So we add in a keyword called exact. And then we say, 
this is going to be the exact path. Stuff that comes out, if there's anything written after it, it no longer matches. Okay, so we'll do that. And I'm going to add one more in here without adding a path. Let's do not found. So I want two components called home, one called not found. This is going to be the thing that I actually show. And this one is if the URL does not match any of the paths that I list inside of this switch statement, then this is the component that's going to appear. Great. Now I'm going to, since I'm going to have several of these, I'm going to create a folder called components and put them all inside there. So I want one called home.js and I'm going to put another one inside of here called notfound.js. Back to app.js, make sure we fix our path here. There we go. So we're bringing in the two pages, one called home, one called not found. Those are the components that we're going to render. Now let's build those two pages. It's going to have just the basic React stuff. Import React and component from React. So we're on home, so this will be home and it extends component. And we need to have our render method with the return statement and then just some basic JSX inside of here. One parent element and inside that we'll throw an H1. This is home. There we go. Pretty simple. And then for the not found, well, I'm just going to copy all this, save some time. simple enough. So we've got home and a not found. The home should show up when we're at this. And if we've got anything else, we should go to the not found. So, hey, there we are. This is home. Add the slash. That's where we are. We put in anything else. There's the 404 error. Okay, so pretty simple. Home page, another one. We want to add in a different path. So we can create something called other. Create a page in our components called other. Again, keeping it pretty basic just so we can do this quickly. So I've got home, I've got other, and inside of here, if the path is other, that's the component we're going to load. Oh, we did not add other, so we have to import that as well. There we go. So 404 error, there's home, and if the URL is other, there we go. Okay. Now, you're not going to make the user type in these URLs. You actually want to have links that take you between these pages. So that's the next thing that we have. With this route, when we go to these components, I want to build a nav menu, and I'm going to have that be consistent throughout. So let's go into here and actually add a nav menu. I'm going to build a component called header, like that. So we need a file called header.js. We're bringing that in here. We'll have to import it. Okay, back into header. There we go. Now the header What we'll do 
is we're going to bring in the fourth component from the React Router DOM. And this one is called NavLink. So if you've watched my other videos, you know I've been using NavLink as just the anchor tags. Well, this one's going to do pretty much the same thing. So this is from React Router DOM that we bring it in. And now I can just add a nav link with a to attribute. Just like that. And then inside of here, you put whatever the link is. So, you know, here's my link to home. And this will be my link to the other page. We put in the URLs that are basically going to match what the routing does. So I have header which has the link to home, the link to other. I'm going to put this inside of here, like this, and I'll put it inside of the other page as well. So I'm reusing it in both places. Doesn't matter which page I'm on. Oh, didn't import it on this page. There we go. other home and you can see up here in the location bar it is just simply changing the URLs if we look inside the app there's the browser router component the routers inside that there's our switch statement and this is the route that we're on right now other go inside of the other and here it is there's my other component and the header is inside that Inside the nav, there's two link, uh, two nav links. Inside the nav link, there's the route with a link component, and there's the anchor tag nested deep inside there. So all this stuff, this has all been broken up into small little components, and they're being composed together to build you a navigation menu, with you really only having to add a nav link tag for each one that you want to navigate to. I mean, you can add CSS to this and style it any way you want, but the functionality is all here. All from just this initial browser router switch. You list off your routes, and then for each route, you list a component. Inside the component, you can list other things. If you want to get some information from the URL, so let's do one of those. Let's create one called Things. And let's say there could be parameters added onto here. So I could do this. When I'm starting with a colon like this, this becomes like a variable. So if my path, oops, I don't want exact for these ones. I could have exact for other. For this one, I definitely don't want exact. We've got the path things followed by anything, the other value that goes here, this is going to be a value that is saved inside of props. I'll be able to go to props.match.params and then thing ID is going to be the value that's inside of there. So let's take a look at that. If we're going to, let's say, let's create a component called things. We'll have to import that. So I'm bringing in things.js to use for the things route, and I'm going to pass a possible value to it. So let's create the component things. default class things extends component. There we go. We get our render method with our return statement inside. There we go. Okay. Now, inside of here, if I want to get at the value of it, we'll have this.props 
and then inside that there's going to be something called match. Match has a property called params and that will contain all of the params that are passed in through the URL. So thing ID, that was the one that we wanted. So header, let's add the link to things slash one. Change these values, there we go. So thing one, thing two, thing three, as we click on those links, you can see the values one, two, and three, or it could be something more, whatever you want to put inside here. So zero, zero, one, two, and three, inside of things, we'll be able to get those values through props, just like this. And then we will write out the contents of the page, which will include our header again and then inside of our paragraph we'll write out the value that gets passed in there we go I'm talking about thing and this should give us the number So thing ID, that is going to be the number, the 001 and so on, that gets passed down to things. Okay, and in things header was not defined, right, we didn't import that. You can see that there's <laughs> very easy to forget the import statements. And this is just going to be in the same folder. Don't have to go to components because we're already inside there. There we are. So we're on the things page, we're talking about thing 003, 2, 1, other, this. So we can jump around through the different pages. And then if we get something else, that number also will be passed down through here. And if we drill down through all of this to get to the things page, there it is. There's the things page. There's match, params, and thing ID. That's what we're getting at here. So the reason that we can get at that information and all this stuff about the route is because things is directly inside of a route object. The route object is what's going to give us this cool stuff and history which has push and replace methods. So if you've watched my video before on the history API, you know that in vanilla JavaScript, there is push state and replace state for changing the URL without actually navigating anywhere. That's what React is doing. And behind the scenes, these nav links that we're using to go to these URLs, that's what they're using, push and replace, to change what's written up here without actually navigating anywhere. All it's doing is changing what's written here. And then that is re-rendering components on the page. That's it. Okay, so uh, that's the basics of routing. I will be doing another one a little bit later, uh, showing how you can write custom scripts and do your own routing, even with this built into it, how we can use these push and replace methods, but that'll be another video. Uh, I think this gives you more than enough to get started. I will um, I will put a copy of this app.js in the comments, and I will put a copy of the header and one of these other component pages, probably the things page, things, header, and app.js. I'll make code gists out of those, and I'll put those in the description so you can download and take a look and play with them. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found it useful, please share it, and as always, Thanks for watching.